Dear friends, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. Today, the buzzword is NEP 2020. Everybody is discussing some aspects of the education policy 2020 and each one's opinion differ. Each one's opinion about the policy is colored by one's ideology, one's um, uh, vision, one what side one is standing for. And therefore, the new education policy, to have a correct understanding, we need to go through this policy, uh, which was declared on 29th of um, uh, July 2020. And this uh, commission, uh, uh, sorry, this policy was a result of two commissions. 2014, we had uh, the first commission, which was headed by Dr. Subramanian, TSR Subramanian Commission. And they submitted the document uh, in the parliament in the draft form. And in the parliament it was uh, very, very heated discussions were there, debate was there. And as Sitaram Yechuri, one who initiated the discussion in the parliament, rightly pointed out that then commission's report was colored by three C's. First one is he calls it centralization. Second one is commercialization. And third one is communalization. These three major C's were the thread for the policy which was submitted by TSR Subramanian Commission. And inside and outside people opposed that uh, proposals. And therefore in 2016 the commission's uh, report was shelved though it was not fully rejected. But then after the uh, this opposition against the first commission came up the government decided to have a new commission with a wider consultative status from all walks of people life people will represent etc etc and they brought out a new commission under the leadership of dr kasturi dengan and dr kasturi dengan after his hard work brought out the draft NEP 2019 which was around 484 pages. It's a very elaborate and very important uh, uh, proposal. And when the government proposed, uh, this commission proposed to the government this and government made it public and welcomed any number of people's suggestions and uh, uh, opinions. Various organizations, peoples, educationists, students, teachers, everybody was asked to give uh, suggestions to the government. And uh, as a result, we also had submitted in, at the various levels, as I as JES secretary submitted the opinions of the Jesuits and very, very clear, forward looking, progressive suggestions we had given to the government. And we accepted what was a positive, what was suggested by Dr. Kasturi Rengan. We met Dr. Kasturi Rengan and submitted our report and he has written a beautiful letter for appreciating our contribution. And uh, CBCI level, we have again submitted our findings. And many other organizations have uh, directly through mail or through uh, personal meetings, etc. suggested plenty of uh, uh, reforms which we thought what is important for the education sector. Now when this policy which came in on 29th of uh, July is actually replacing the 1986 policy. The 1986 policy was basically founded on two pillars. One is the focus was on national integration and also one was on the constitutional values. And this policy in 1986 uh, policy was replaced by this 2000 and policy after 36 years, uh, sorry, 34 years now, we are having the new policy, which is quite flexible and quite integrated in its approach. The major things uh, this commission uh, proposes uh, is, it, it become, makes uh, the board exams more easier, Better designed progress cards at schools will be one of the major things which is proposed by this. A single higher education regulator, 
multiple entry and exit options in the courses, same norms for private and public institutes, and watch on fee hike. HRD ministry is um, renamed as the Ministry of Education, etc. I think uh, uh, there are a lot of good things suggested by this commission and uh, uh, we can see what are the changes we need to and we are free to express our opinion to the government as educationists. The 21st century, Prime Minister Modi says, uh, while addressing the cabinet, just uh, on the day of the approval of this, uh, this policy, uh, Prime Minister Modi says, the 21st century is the era of knowledge. This is the time for increased focus on learning, research, innovation. This is exactly what India's National Education Policy 2020 does. We are focusing on the quality of education in India. Our attempts have been to make our education system the most advanced and modern for students in our country. So with that aim, we have made this policy, the vision of the policy. I briefly explain the vision and the major uh, proposed areas of reforms. The vision is a fantastic vision because the earlier draft had another vision which was uh, more uh, elaborately mentioned uh, later on was uh, what you call, um, it calls about uh, more of Indianization and India centered approach. But this policy, vision of the National Education Policy 2020 says an education system that contributes to an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all. That's the first part of the vision which is given by this new education policy. The second part it says it develops a sense of respect towards fundamental rights, a deep sense of respect for the fundamental rights, duties and constitutional values. Bonding with one's country and a conscious awareness of one's role and responsibilities in a changing world. The third aspect of this vision mentions is, this is very important for us to focus on is, this instills skills and values and dispositions uh, that, uh, that support responsible commitment to human rights, sustainable development and living uh, and global well-being thereby reflecting a truly global citizenship. I think it's very important and every Jesuit must be very happy because we have in the internationally we have formed a, a what you call two important aspects which we are concentrating now. One is global citizenship project and we have a task force on global citizenship and we also have environmental uh, ecological awareness as a serious uh, uh, point for all the Jesuit school cut across the countries uh, globally uh, focused on and I am very happy to see the vision has mentioned those two aspects which we also had suggested in our submission of suggestions to the commission. Anyway, it gives eight key principles in the education policy. The number one is the respect for diversity and local context. You know, there is always an allegation that there is a, a crave for monoculture and also one nation theory etc. People used to uh, criticize and the earlier policy I said, as I said, TSR Superintendent Commission draft was rejected on the basis of such uh, uh, extreme nationalistic, majoritarian and communalized uh, thinking. That is what the allegations given by many uh, people. And this policy has a key principle as a respect for diversity and the local context in all curriculum and pedagogy and policy it will be reflected and I think it is an extremely welcoming step. The second one is the key principle is equity and inclusion. Equity is very very important. Equity is we can also say justice and inclusion as the cornerstone of all educational decisions is the principle of the new education policy. But there are a lot of lot of points we can see 
people who read between the lines also explains that um, these things are in the in the principles and vision these things have come out very well but the explanation is not so well articulated in the later pages anyway uh, the third point is a community participation that is the key principles of the NEP. Community participation includes encouragement and facilitation for philanthropic, private and community participation. This can also can be critically looked at. Anyway, fourth point, the major point, the principle which in which the, P, the NEP talks about is the use of technology. And all of us, now we are aware during this pandemic lockdown period, all of us are aware of the significance and importance of the use of technology. Actually, the schools and classes at home, children are at home. Uh, these days, we are conducting through online classes. The technology has various levels. And we need to look at this technology in a serious manner. In teaching and learning, removing language barriers for the young students and the education planning and management. It's very important to notice that they have used the exclusive educational um, uh, method through technology and uh, very specifically mentioned about the Dibyang children. Uh, the fifth uh, principle it talks about is emphasize conceptual understanding because this presupposes that in our education system mainly we, we had a, a rote uh, learning for mark, examination oriented study etc. That has to go away and students must uh, understand about the conceptual learning that I think that is very very welcome principle uh, another important point again the Jesuits must be very happy because we have suggested in our um, uh, suggestions to the Commission about the unique capabilities must be accepted and we believe all are children of God and each one is differently talented and the talents and giftedness must be accepted and therefore, we have suggested to the government saying the multiple intelligence is a better way to understand each child, his aptitude, his capabilities, his talents and his um, special uh, giftedness. And therefore, this uh, principle in the new education policy says unique capabilities is recognized and identify them as, as in, in each student and uh, make them to blossom one more thing which the key principle says is critical thinking and creativity this is also very much dear to the Jesuit education as 500 years we have been working on this in our schools students must be critically thinking we should create children who are more far from the modern crowd we must make opinions on the basis of our conviction and therefore critical thinking must be encouraged and this will in fact help us to have a dissenting voice but still agree to disagree principle and critical thinking is a great measure the new new policy brings forth and finally the key principle includes a continuous review it says based on the sustained research and regular assessment by educational experts students must be evaluated assessed and assessment system also in a in a different way we need to do using all the scientific tools and technology and uh, I'm sure that the government will give us guidelines for that and uh, a very important aspect of the major changes in the school education system is uh, universalization of early childhood care national mission for foundational literacy and numeracy and uh, the entire structure of the education has changed that is from 10 plus 2 structure changed into 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 and this 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 is an age related calculation and therefore up to the age of 3 to 18 the children will be considered in the uh, uh, that is called up to secondary education and the first we will uh, understand this point 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 uh, in a very very significant manner and it says also curriculum to integrate 21st century skills mathematical thinking and scientific temper very good lofty ideals 
and no rigid separation between arts and science, between curricular and extracurricular activities, between vocational and academic streams. I think these are all very, very welcome signs. Education to gifted children, gender inclusion fund, KGBV to up to grade 12, reduction in curriculum to core concepts. Every child will come out of school adept in at least one skill that is why skill education is starting i think at, from class 6 onwards with um, internship so that the children will be par excellent like the developed nations nobody should lag behind they should use their head heart and also the hand and it also proposes a few more things in the school education sector the new curriculum framework of ece school teachers and adult education will be done and that will be given to the responsibility is given to NCERT to prepare the curriculum framework. Board examination also will be changed. It will be at the lower stakes based on knowledge application, which have we already said about conceptual understanding. It talks about the medium of instruction till at, la at least grade 5 or preferably till grade 8 uh, and beyond in home language, mother tongue, regional language, etc. As far as possible, let them study in the mother tongue, etc. That is the suggestion given. How well it is implementable and practical in the Indian situation is a doubtful point. We also have a three, 360 degree holistic progress card for child, tracking student progress for achieving learning outcomes, vocational education to be started from class 6th uh, with internships, NTA to conduct, NTA means national testing agencies to conduct a common entrance exam for education to higher, edu, uh, what you call admission to higher education institutions. National professional standard for teaching, which is a very, very important thing for uh, testing the teachers, etc. Having an updated knowledge about the subject which they teach, therefore NPST is going to be a significant change. Book promotion of policy and digital libraries common standards for public and private schools etc will be there and finally it is good to understand the structural change which is going to be a very very significant steps for us in Indian education that calls for a deeper understanding age 3 to 8 that is um, uh, kg to standard 2 the child will be in a foundational stage where multi-level play and activity based learning will be happening and we also have uh, 8 to 11, that is age 8 to 11, that will be uh, children uh, from class 3 to 5. This is called preparatory stage, play, discovery and activity based and uh, interactive classroom learning will happen at that time. And the class uh, 6 to 8, which is called 11 to 14 years, uh, is called middle stage according to the policy and experimental learning in the sciences, mathematics, arts, social sciences and humanities takes place at that time. And finally, the last four years clubbed together that is 9, 10, 11, 12, 12th class will be put together and that is called secondary stage. In this stage, multidisciplinary study, greater critical thinking, flexibility and student choice of subject etc. will be taught and therefore this period is very important the structural change is extremely significant for us to study understand it is not about the classes it's about age and uh, but at the same time one or two important point for us to reflect about uh, these changes and reforms are there are a lot of criticisms are coming and the concerns which we need to uh, address definitely we need to address these concerns which are expressed like socio-cultural issues have been raised there i'm not going to elaborate all those things but uh, people have come out with the ideas and privatization issue is a serious uh, thing we need to uh, actually we need to study and question higher education class classification issue issue is a is a questionable uh, and more debatable point autonomy and regulation issues also uh, there is contradictions in the in the policy when you read fully we will understand there is a, a lot of contradiction what they talk and what they act upon a pedagogical issue has to be seriously looked at what is the pedagogy aimed at etc is it um, is it a section of uh, uh, what you call the ethos and values and knowledge tradition etc they are talking um, 
it may need a little more serious analysis and how far these constitutional values have been uphold in this one we need to study and uh, it also talks about um, something very significant for all of us to look at that is uh, why this has not been discussed in the parliament without the parliament it's uh, in fact uh, undermining the parliament no members who are people's representative uh, have no chance to discuss and debate and suggest i think that is another area of uh, concern and why this policy came up during the pandemic period itself where our concentration is supposed to be uh, on uh, 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 controlling the pandemic at that time all these important policies without discussions coming out is also uh, keep some kind of doubts in the minds of the people and um, finally we need to have better teachers and better people who can implement the changes i think there is only one more point last point which uh, also a point for us to reflect that is a multidisciplinary education which is proposed by the commission and multiple multi disciplinary subjects uh, also mentioned there is an nep 11.7 you'll see if if you look at uh, uh, in the in the policy 11 it talks about that the departments in languages like uh, literature music philosophy ideology art dance theater education mathematics statistics pure and applied sciences sociology economics sports and such other subjects needed for a multidisciplinary stimulating indian education and environment will be established and strengthened at higher educations across the country because today the buzz word is a multidisciplinary subject and everybody is talking about that but uh, as some scholars have pointed out there is also an anomaly anomaly that anomaly is this one while the list is unexceptionable it is worth flagging that is missed what is missed out missed out the field such as the more last 20 years if you look at there are a lot of new studies have come out very very significant progressive developmental studies and those things have not been mentioned such as women studies and gender studies cultural studies media studies dalit studies studies of discrimination and exclusion environmental studies peace and reconciliation studies uh, and uh, developmental studies all of which have developed over the last 3 uh, 4 decades many of these have engaged with the multidisciplinary interdisciplinary in exciting and disturbing ways i think uh, we cannot ignore these changing subjects etc autonomy is also a, a question which we can raise but whatever it is the national uh, education policy has a lot of goodness even though again we can criticize about the pub, the, the privatization aspect uh, in this one uh, it it doesn't have much talk about for example it doesn't talk about the caste it uh, doesn't talk about reservation at all it also does not talk much about the fundamental rights it, even though it talks about in the vision and it comes out uh, uh, very passingly it mentions but it stresses on fundamental duties and uh, other constitutional values but it is simply not talking much about the fundamental rights uh, sorry a uh, fundamental rights of the citizens and also about secularism i think there are plenty of points for us to really focus upon and um, bring out to the notice of the authorities if need be we look forward that more cooperative federalism that is states because education comes under the concurrent list i am sure in the coming days the government will definitely take into consideration of this aspect for the betterment of the country betterment of its people so need for cooperative federalism and we also strive towards universalization of education because we must make a uh, right to education compulsory education has the right for people don't give at the whims and fancies of people and finally government mi- must make more responsible uh, uh, responsibilities not responsible more responsible uh, uh, position 
in terms of educating people putting that six percentage of GDP must be realized and um, uh, giving a very very important uh, uh, priority to education and health care and that is what we are all looking forward and I am sure as we welcome the new education policy it's uh, it the, the gray areas must be clarified and I am sure that the government will look uh, at this aspect and uh, mitigate the doubts and confusion that the scholars are uh, raising uh, at this juncture. I am sure that this policy will take us forward for the next 20 years to 30 years this will form the basis and therefore there is no uh, what you call uh, ego problem where there is what is wrong must be accepted what is good must be promoted I am sure the NEP 2020 will be a path breaking policy as the PM in his introductory remark during the cabinet meeting placed before we as Christian educators must see the goodness of this policy and also must uh, bring out the gray areas uh, with conviction and courage. Thank you very much and God bless all of us.